G'day guys, it's Paul from Pauly Man Astro and welcome to a long delayed video. It's been nearly a year since my last video. Life got in the way. If you're interested in the the deeper where I've been and, and what I've been up to and why I've been so delayed. I'll put that at the end of the video so I don't clutter the beginning of the video. One of the consequences though of being away for so long is that you may have unwittingly been unsubscribed or at least your subscription status might have been changed so you're going to miss any videos I do upload. So take the time now to check your subscription status just down below, that would be amazing. And if you're new to the channel, of course, I'd love it if you did subscribe so you get more regular content. So you can see here two images. On the left is what I'm gonna dub a, an image with poor contrast. And on the right, I'm gonna dub an image with decent contrast. There's obviously a lot more I could do to the image, but I think this highlights nicely what we wanna talk about and what we wanna demonstrate today. So this isn't a processing video. I'm not going to go through the intricacies of how I actually process these. I've already got videos on how to use GHS or how I use GHS and how I incorporate it into my narrowband processing. That's not the purpose of the video. What I want to show is the end results of using GHS, the things to look out for when you're using GHS. In particular today, what does poor contrast actually look like. It's quite clear visually what it looks like, but what does it actually look like mathematically on the histogram? So let's find out. Let's open up GHS and take a look at these two images. So I'll reset it and I'll drop it down here because all we really need to do is look at the histogram here. So let's look at the image here on the left, the poor quality image. Uh, and if you watch the video closely, you notice that was the image I was working on and then I made one adjustment uh, on the clone image uh, to improve the contrast. So I deliberately induced a lack of, or introduced a lack of contrast on the left and then I corrected it on the right. Not best practice, you should probably avoid maybe doing that in the first place, but that's, I, I wanted to, have a, a base of poor contrast and then improve it. Uh, and if you look at this image on the left, the histogram um, has something in it that the histogram on this side doesn't have. Sure, this one has moved slightly to the left, which is why it looks a bit darker than this image, but there's something else that's on this histogram that's playing into it um, in a big way. Maybe you can notice it. It's the fact that this image has a nice smooth tapering off here, whereas this one has kind of a, a flat spot before it continues dropping off. Uh, and if we go to the log view, that may or may not be more apparent. Indeed it is. So on, on this one, this transition downwards is kind of like a nice uniform ramp, whereas this one, there's very much a change in steepness. So it tapers off very slowly here and then it drops off very rapidly. So that difference is subtle, but you can see it has a massive impact on your image. Uh, so outside of log view, this hump kind of starts at 51, uh, 52 and kind of tapers off here at 56. So if I start clicking around the image, where is that? There you go, it's, it's this kind of region in here. These kind of brightnesses in here are all very much in that kind of range or thereabouts on that, that kind, in the vicinity of that flat spot is all of these, all these regions here, where it does indeed look quite flat in this region. Whereas the image on the, the left here, this region so where it looks quite flat here on the left, uh, it looks like you can see much more structure in here. Uh, and that's all it takes. That slight little dip in the histogram, or that slight little flat spot, is all it takes 
to reduce the, the, the contrast in your image. So when you're working on an image, uh, if you find that you've got a, a flat spot, sometimes it's easier to see in log view than it is in, in the actual image. But if you see that you've got a flat spot, then you can do some work in GHS to really target that region and smooth it out and it pays dividends. You can see the difference in contrast. Now, again, I'm not saying that that image on the right there is perfect, anywhere near perfect, but you saw that I just made one change in, in, in my histogram, very slight change, and it had a massive impact on contrast. So that about does it for this video. Um, hopefully you learned something and hopefully it'll be um, a lot sooner than a year before I actually start producing my next video. I said at the beginning I'd talk about where I've been for the last year for those that are at all interested. Um, obviously two young kids uh, taken over our lives um, and very little free time. Uh, we moved into a new house which um, setting up has has been a bit of a transition there. But the big thing uh, has been change of jobs. So I, I transferred from one school to another uh, and I've jumped from 15 years of maths to, to now teaching junior science and physics with a little bit of engineering as well. Uh, so a huge change, huge transition, getting all the resources ready uh, has taken up most of my, my daily work time and then of course the kids in the the weekends and the evenings uh, in the mornings uh, so very little time for uh, doing YouTube uh, life has kind of taken over but I'm at the point now where it's been a, a full year since I uh, started that job right about the time that video stopped being produced um, and I'm at the point now where I'm hopefully getting back around the full year with resources mostly ready that now just need to be slightly tweaked and tailored to a specific class. So hopefully I'll have some more time to get back into YouTube again, crossing fingers. Uh, anyway, if you've watched this far, thank you very much. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.